Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna to show you one trick to fix loud or harsh cymbals in your overheads. We're gonna be looking at overly loud cymbals in overhead microphones today, but before we dive in, if you are looking to dial in a repeatable workflow for getting professional sounding drum mixes, then I want you to go through my three-step framework for mixing drums workshop. This workshop will show you my three-step process that I use on almost every mix for getting pro drum mixes right from your home studio. It is a 100% free to watch on demand video training and you can get access to that by clicking the link below in the video description. Completely free on demand, you can go watch it right now. Now, let's jump in here and look at these overheads. So you can actually see just visually how loud the cymbals are in the overheads here. Now, sometimes that can be a problem because you're trying to balance the hi-hat and the ride that you're getting from your overhead with the cymbal mics, right? You wanna get a good picture of the kit with the overheads, but if the cymbals are too loud, sometimes they just take over everything. So let me play you here what the track is sounding like, and then we'll dive into these cymbals and how we fixed these louder cymbals here. So take a listen. Here's what our track is sounding like. But I'll be back again. That's what our finished mix is sounding like here. Let me solo up the drums here so you can hear just what the drums are sounding like. And then I'm gonna take off, you can see we got quite a bit of processing here on the overheads. I'll take off the processing and you can hear what the overheads are sounding like without the trick we're doing here to control those cymbals. All right, let me solo up the overheads here, and I'm gonna take off our processing here. Just the trick we're doing here, which is these three multi-bands. And take a listen here to these cymbal hits without what we're doing, and then I'll kick these back in. You can hear the difference. We're just tucking those two big cymbal hits down into the overheads. That way, as we pull up the overheads with the kit, we get more of the hi-hat and we get more of the ride and more of the general kit sound as we balance it against our spot mics there. We don't want it to just be those cymbal hits because then that's, if we balance those to fit well in the mix, we're not gonna hear our hi-hat or our ride or any, any kit noise that we get from our overheads. And we're getting a picture of the kit from our overheads and that's what we wanna bring up to blend with our spot mics here. So what are we doing to bring down these overly loud cymbal hits that get harsh when they're too loud like that? So all we're doing here, these two things at the end aren't, aren't really changing anything of the sound of the overheads. Those are just some, some balancing things uh, pan-wise. So here's our actual EQ on our overhead here. This is just general EQ, over, EQ for overheads here. Rolling off some of the low end here. Our high pass is up at 140, so just trimming some of the kick, some of the low end out of our overheads here. A big, big cut here in the low mid, 362 hertz. We're doing about a seven and a half dB cut. That's getting rid of all the mud here on our overheads. Now this is applicable to the situation here. We're rolling off some of the super, super highs here. The low pass is up to 11.5 K and that's a, a gentler slope there. It's a 6 dB per octave slope. I don't wanna go too crazy with it. I just wanna roll off some of the super highs there so it's not so harsh on these cymbal hits. And it can get it can get a little harsh up top too with a ride if they start hitting the bell. Things can ring out a little bit too much in the super highs there. Now what we're doing to control these bigger cymbal hits and balance them in with the rest of the overhead sound is we're using multibands, but we're using them in series here. So we're stacking multibands on top of each other so we can control these cymbal hits without making them sound distorted or going too far or sound over compressed when these, when these cymbal hits come in. So I'm using the de-esser setting here 
on the multiband and I have it set to 3.3K and above. So this is the area we're focusing in on with the multiband. That's where our symbols are living mainly above about 3K here in our overheads. That's where they jump out quite a bit inside the overhead sound. Ratio is 20 to one ratio here, fastest attack, fastest release, and that's for this 3.36K and above. Bottom setting here, you can see we're not doing anything one to one ratio. And our threshold is all the way up there. Let me show you what we're doing here. I'll hit play and I'll AB this multiband. You can see how much compression we're doing. We're not going too far. We're gonna do a little bit here with each multiband. That's why we're stacking them. If you go too far, then you get some, some distortion uh, and some gainy noises on the cymbal hits and it just doesn't sound right. You can hear the multiband working on the cymbals. That's not what we want. We want it to be smooth and we want it to sound natural here. So without, and then I'll kick it in, you can see what we're doing. See, we're mainly attacking these two cymbal hits here, not touching any of the rest of the sound coming from the kit. That way we compress these louder hits here and it allows us to pull up the rest of the top end for our hi-hat and the top end that attack that we're getting on the side stick there, which is really, really nice. So we're only doing maybe three to six dB a reduction on these bigger cymbal hits here. Then copying that same multiband down, so same settings here, only 3.36K and above, 20 to one ratio, fastest attack, fastest release here. And we're doing a little bit more compression on this top range here. So if you go too far with one of these, then it starts to sound a little wonky. So I'll, I'll pull this, this one down or I'll pull the last one down. You can hear how weird it sounds. So without, and then I'll kick this one in. So this is our second multiband now. You can hear here we have a little bit more control now. Our overheads are sounding a, a touch more balanced here. We're gonna move into our third one now. So we've done a little bit of work with our first multiband here, talking those cymbals back just a touch, then a little bit more with the second multiband, moving them back into the overheads a little bit more. Now we're gonna finish it off here with this third multiband. So take a listen again without and then with. Same settings here, only working on 3.36K and above, 20 to one ratio, one millisecond attack and 10 millisecond release here. So with, without and then with. You can hear how much more natural those cymbal hits sound now. They're not jumping out when we get to these cymbal hits. So like we have this gentle kind of mellow drum groove and then all of a sudden, wham, we have these big cymbal hits. That feels out of place, especially in a gentler song like this or a smoother song like this. Everything's pretty laid back and to have huge cymbal hits is pretty crazy sounding. Let me show you what happens if we go too far with the multiband here. So we're at negative 20.40 with our threshold. I'm going to pull it down. I want you to hear what it sounds like if we start crushing these cymbals. So the further down you go, obviously the more you're gonna get of the rest of the kit. You can hear we start to compress the side stick, which, which sounds a little bit funky. And then we start working on the hi-hat, which we don't need to compress the hi-hat or the side stick. Ooh, excuse me. But the more compression we layer onto these big cymbal hits, the darker the cymbal hits get, they start to distort a little bit on the top end. And then you have this feeling that it's like a gate, right? That when the cymbal hit comes, we get this huge reduction 
and then it opens back up and we have the rest of the drum kit. That's not what we want. We want to ease these cymbals down. That's why we're doing it in series here. So instead of using one multiband and really layering on the compression onto these big cymbal hits, we do a little bit of work with the first one, a little bit of work with the second one, and a little bit of work with the third one just to finish it off. By using it in series like this, it's smoother and it feels more natural on our drums here. So let's put it back into our entire kit here. We'll start with out, and then we'll throw back in, and we'll listen to with here. You can hear it's quite a bit more natural sounding with these three multi bends in. So if you have cymbals that are really loud inside your overheads or maybe they're a little bit too harsh for the mix, use multi band but use it in series. So be gentle with each one, do a little bit of work with the first one, a little bit of work with the second one, and a little bit of work with the third one. The gentler you can be on the overheads, the more natural the finished product or the more natural your result is going to sound when you put it back in with the rest of your drums. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to level up your drum mixes, then I have just the thing for you, and it is completely free. It is my three-step framework for mixing drums workshop, and you can get access to that by clicking the link in the description to help you dial in a repeatable workflow for cranking out pro drum mixes. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.